Hi guys, this is Ed, and I'm going to walk you through some navigation basics for Logic Pro. And I'm running Logic Pro 10.2.2. Let me zero this out. Uh, I also opened up the demo project that comes with Logic, and you can find that under the Help menu here. And we're going to talk about this control bar up here, which is uh, this set of buttons up here, this transport area here, the display area here, some more control buttons here, uh, the volume output, and uh, these are media buttons over here. But we're going to focus right now is on this left hand, upper left hand corner. And I'm going to open up the library. I'm going to select the library button, and it opens up this area. In this area, we have patches that are set up by categories. If you click on a category, you get subcategories. And what a patch is, is it basically um, contains the instrument, the effects, and the routing presets for a track. So you can select the patch, and the settings are automatically applied to the track. Let's take a closer look at that. Now here I've selected lead vocal B on track two. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select just this audio region right here. I'm going to hit the U key and it sets up the cycle record, this loop function. And we're going to listen to that. Okay, so now I'm going to solo that so we can just listen to this lead vocal B. Okay, now I apologize. This is going through my, uh, through my microphone, so the audio quality is not the best. But for the demonstration purposes, it should work fine. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to select the category voice, and we have all these subcategories of different uh, vocal presets. So I'm going to change it to bright vocal. And we'll listen to it. Okay, and now I'm going to change it to fuzz vocal so that we can hear the the difference in the presets. All right, these presets are fantastic. They're a great place to start. Uh, they generally get you about 80-85% of the way there. Uh, there might be some tweaking that you're going to want to do uh, as you get, as you dig deeper into logic. But that's the library. Let's go to the next one, which is this I, and that's the inspector. Now, if you notice, it sets up the, this is the artwork for the, uh, for the band, and um, it has these other regions. So if you click on the uh, disclosure triangle, it opens up these, these other areas. Um, I suggest to stay away from these at the beginning. You can dig deeper into these later on down the road. Right now, what we want to focus on is really this dual channel strip. Uh, to the right, this area over here, this is the output. This is the main output of the track, so th this volume will affect everything. Everything that's been recorded there. And here you have your plugins your plugin effects, and this is part of the, the patch that, you, that when you set it up, it puts things in the proper order. So the effects need to go into in a certain order. And here I can solo or mute the track. I can adjust the volume. I can adjust the panning. This is for automating the track. Uh, you can select the outputs. You have these different uh, routing buses that you can use as well. So all, all of this is nice and handy because it's right it's right here and it's available to you and it's not lost like you'll we'll see later in the in the mixer section. So that's the inspector. This is the toolbar. The toolbar shows up right underneath the uh, control bar. So this opens and closes it. And this is great for, uh, for example, this track zoom. 
if I'm working on this track, if I'm working on this audio region, I can get in there and I can, I can see what I'm doing. I can actually do some editing right here. So we'll discuss that further when we talk about editing in future articles. Um, the next, the question mark is just that, actually I'm going to get out of the track zoom. The question mark is a, a quick help and it opens up this, uh, this box that you can move in and out of the way. And all you need to do is just take the pointer and as you point to things, it does exactly what it says. It gives you quick help. It gives you a quick reference as to what each of these things are. This would be good to keep open at the beginning as you're learning to navigate your way around so you know what things are called. And that's quick help. The next button is smart controls. Let me hover over that so you can, you can see that it says smart controls. And here it opens up a compressor and an EQ. So I can listen to this lead vocal and I can adjust. Yeah, okay. I like turning on the analyzer. So you can see and you can hear what you're tweaking. Let's go to the the compressor. I tie my hands up to a chest so I don't fall now, as you can see, I'm, I'm I'm going a little extreme on it, so you can hear the differences that these things do. I can turn some of these things on and off. Okay, again, go in there, play around with it. Um, that's the best way to, to to start getting comfortable with uh with these features. Next is the mixer. And this is exactly what people think about when, when they go to a recording studio. They think about seeing this giant board. Now, the beautiful thing about digital recording is that it shows you only what you need to see at the moment, and you can control how much and how little you see. So, for example, if we look at this, at this, mixing, this mixing console here, it looks like we've got two, four, six, eight, ten tracks, when in actuality... there are 84 tracks and you just saw when I clicked on that disclosure triangle it, it started populating all of these these channel strips it added them to my mixer here this is a feature that I that I love in logic because it makes it nice and easy to work on instruments at a time for example I like to begin with drums and here the drums um, let me get out of the solo mode Drums are a variety of instruments. Here it's got the hi-hat, a snare drum, uh, the overheads, it's got a lo-fi drum track, it's got toms, and they're multiple tracks. But if I'm not working on them, I can, I can hide them away. We'll go dig deeper into this feature. This is a feature that I, I very much like. But what we want to do here is just look at a strip at a time. And if you notice, when I click on it in the mixer, it also lights up in the arrange window so it becomes highlighted and if I highlight it in the arrange window it also highlights it in the mixer so I can see what I'm what I'm working on if, if I need to just do do some minor adjustments here now just like we saw in the inspector mode here we have a dual strip version of the lead vocal B which I highlighted here and the output if I go to lead vocal A lead vocal A shows up here on the left hand side of my dual mixer in the inspector and it also gets highlighted in the arrange window so th this is handy because now I can I can see the effects if I want to tweak an effect while I'm mixing if I want to adjust the panning on it let's do that with the um, with the background vocals now here what I did was I, I turned on the the background vocals and notice how when I click on this dis, uh, disclosure triangle it closes and opens the background vocals and here it's the these these vocals right here these are the ones that I, I want to focus on and um, I'm actually I'm going to cut this down so that it just loops that that region now I can solo these so I can just hear the vocals yeah, yeah, it's okay. I 
Now I can I can start to tweak these. I can I can pan these. So let me make these extreme left and right. So now you can you can hear them a little bit more isolated. I'm adjusting the pan. Again, I apologize for the uh, audio quality. But you can go in there. You can you 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 can mess around with the, with, with all of the, all of these settings, and that's the mixer. Now let me go back to the main window. I'm going to get out of this. You can see how it it, it keeps everything nice and tidy. And the last thing that we're going to talk about is the editors. Now I began as a teenager splicing tape. That's what we called it. Uh, and we would use scissors, razor blades, and scotch tape to actually cut and paste, literally, um, tape. And he, that's why this scissor icon is immediately recognizable to us remember the good old days type of guys. Okay, so in, in this instance right here, uh, what it shows up, this is the MIDI editor. So I'm going to find a MIDI instrument. And generally, synthesizers are good. So we'll start with this crunchy synth over here. And if you notice, as I selected it, it populated the editor window here. Now, here, this is a piano roll. Um, and this is very popular for, for MIDI editors. Um, musicians, and especially arrangers, like this function, the score editor, because I can actually see the notes that I'm adjusting when I'm editing uh, the, in this case, the keyboard part. Part of the MIDI editor is also the step editor, and here you can adjust the different parameters. So you can actually, it's it's a it's a, a mini mixer. I can adjust the volume and the pan, and uh, there's these other settings that I I can tweak as well. Then there's also, uh, let's go to the to the vocal. This is a deeper view of the track zoom that we saw in the toolbar. I can go in the toolbar and I can do track zoom here, but since I have the editor selected, it won't allow me to do that. Now I can get out of the toolbar and I can actually go in here and I can edit a little bit deeper. I've got a set of tools here that I can, I can use. I can use a scissor tool to cut. So let's say I want to cut this part. And I just want to hear what it's going to sound like without that part in there. So let me solo it. And when we get to, to this region, it'll be silenced. Okay, now that comes in handy if, for example, uh, she sang that part well the first time and the second time it would it was a little out of tune or something. You could cut and paste and move these things around. So, so that's handy in the, the editing window. Now, that's it for this segment. Uh, I thank you for hanging with me. And in future segments, we're going to go into these concepts a little bit further. So uh, I look forward to seeing you then.